Hello everyone, I welcome you all to this next video in the Spring Framework lecture series. In this series so far, we started our journey by having a look at the brief history of the Java web development and how Spring came into existence. Later on, we learned the concepts of beans as reusable components, dependencies, configuration, and Spring modules. Particularly, we studied in detail the context module of the Spring Framework. We also learned XML and Java configurations to configure Spring applications. All of these concepts are taught in a theoretical setting. We all have some doubts in our mind as to how to apply the theoretical concepts practically. In this video, we will take a little detour and work on a simulation of a real-world production application. I hope this video will enlighten you on practical aspects of application development. So, let us get started. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel, like the video, and share the content as much as possible. One important question I thought about extensively is, what should be a good example of an application to apply the concepts till now? The dilemma is, the example should only focus on the topics discussed till now. Additionally, the example should be easy to grasp by anyone in the audience. Keeping all of this in mind, I think the below example should suffice. Before I move on, I would like to mention if you have some suggestions regarding example application, please comment in the comment section and I will try to pick them up in later videos. We will develop an application which will send communications to users. The communications will be sent via email, SMS, WhatsApp and voice call. Let us list down the functional requirements. The application will be a console based application and for simplicity will take inputs from the command line. The catch here is we won't be sending real communications. Instead, we will log onto the console to simulate that actual communication is being sent. The scope of sending real communications involves things which are out of scope of this video. To make this problem more interesting, let me add a real world condition. Sending email communications at scale is a very complex challenge and we obviously can't rely on one mechanism to send out the emails. Hence, in this application, we have to send out emails using multiple email providers, namely use SendGrid email service, use Mailgun email service, use SMTP email service. There are three types of SMTP service providers we should use. Number one, Google SMTP, number two AWS SES SMTP and number three my custom SMTP. I understand that you may not have heard about these email service providers till now. You don't have to worry. Assume that these are just different ways of sending emails. There is no particular priority assigned to each service and we are free to choose at random which service to use for each email sending request. This condition will help you to understand and, and visualize the concept of dependent beans and reusable components in much greater detail. Let us get started on implementing the solution. As I said, we will be reading inputs from the console. So the first thing we have to think about is what inputs to read from the console. We have to decide in such a way that reading inputs from the console should be minimalistic. We should leverage the concepts learned till now to accomplish the desired functionality. Keeping all of this in mind, take a pause and think about the right inputs from the console. The input from the console should only consist of communication type and user details. Example inputs are shown here. Next, let us decide on the architecture of our application. Architecture may seem like a big word, but in reality it is not. Mapping the real world into the software application you are building is an art of software architecture. The traits of a good software architecture are Number 1. How best can we map the real world? Number 2. Modifications should be easy to implement. To implement a small change, we should not have to re-architect the whole system. If we have to re-architect the whole system, 
then it's a bad design number three how easy is the maintenance of the system number four cost factor associated with server component should be minimalistic number five and most importantly the chosen architecture should be implemented within the given time frame and resources there is a saying that don't use a cannon to kill a fly there is no point of using the best technology possible if that can't be implemented in the given time frame don't reinvent the wheel for our use case all of these may not be necessary these are just highlighted here to make a general point applying these principles on the problem at hand i think it's best to create a central component which exposes apis for communication to a user this component internally uses other internal components to delegate its work each of the communication protocols should be separated out into their own components one for each email sms whatsapp and voice call since there can be more than one way of sending email the email component should internally delegate its task to sub components like send grid component or mail gun component apart from this one more important aspect we need to think about is the user and vision a class to map the user properties from the real world some properties we can think of our name date of birth email mobile number and gender in our case we are only interested in two properties email and mobile number this class is what is known as domain class and an, and an object of this class represents a physical user with the architecture sorted out let us implement it once everything is figured out implementing the solution is comparatively simple Here is the basic project structure I created till now. This is a Maven project. If you don't understand Maven, it's okay. You don't need any specific knowledge of Maven to implement this. Simply follow along. In Maven, the pom file represents the metadata about the project. The first thing I need to do is add Spring framework dependencies in our pom file. We only need Spring core, Spring beans, and Spring context modules to fulfill our requirement. This concludes the POM part. Next up is Java code. For now, it only has a main class. I am creating an interface here, which is the central component discussed above. I am calling this communicator. The communicator interface has four APIs, which the driver program can use to, tr to trigger communications to the user. Practically, a communicator communicates with a user, so obviously we would want some kind of user representation. I am creating a user class here. It has two properties email and mobile number with relevant setter and getters i am making these properties final since i don't envision them to change at a later stage let us now focus on creating individual component apis there should be each one for email sms whatsapp and voice call first one is email it should only focus on sending out the email it has a single api of send email note here i am not using the user domain object and the arguments the method are more raw this is intentional the user domain object is passed around between the driver program and the communicator once the control flow reaches the communicator the communicator decodes the relevant information to send out the email and delegate email sending part to email component. This implies that common functionality is implemented generically. Next one is SMS. Same with email, it also has a single API with relevant method arguments. As is the case with the email component, the arguments here don't expect a user outlet directly and works with their own mobile number.
WhatsApp and voice call components are also defined following the same principles. Now that we have the basic structure of the application ready, let us implement these components. First one is communicator, creating a default implementation of the same and implementing the APIs. I'm creating some hard-coded strings here. These hard-coded strings are used as SMS body or WhatsApp body or email subject. Doing the generic heavy lifting in default communicator implementation and delegating to relevant subcomponents should suffice as the default communicator implementation. Next on, we have to implement the subcomponents. Let me start with SMS. It is fairly simple. The only requirement here is to log the output to the console. As you can see, first, I'm creating a string message which needs to be logged onto the console. Next, I will log this message onto the console. It's a very simple implementation. If anyone would want to replace the log with the actual communication part, they would only have to change this single method. Next on is WhatsApp. Same as SMS, logging to the console, all relevant information which simulates the real functionality. Similarly, we can implement the voice call subcomponent as well. For the email part, if you remember, we have to choose between multiple providers at random. The three email providers are SendGrid, Mailgun and SMTP. Let us quickly define the APIs for the same. The APIs are similar to that of email sender. Now, there are three internal types of SMTP senders. Google SMTP sender. Creating Google SMTP sender component here. All of these components has the similar API as email sender. The only purpose of these components is to send out emails. Similarly, I am creating the AWS SES SMTP sender. The last one is my SMTP sender. Just a note. These are all the subcomponents I was talking about when we were discussing architecture. The email center component should use these dependent components. 
it will delegate the work of actually sending out email communications to these sub components. At the first level, we have to choose at random between SendGrid, Mailgun and SMTP providers. Choosing at random is also trivial. One simple solution is to randomly generate a number and based on the remainder after dividing by 3, choose the relevant sub-module. Here, this is a simple application of choosing at random. For production applications, we can enhance this to include factors such as priority current load for the service cost factor, transactional emails, which should be instantly versus promotional emails, which can be delayed, and so on. Implementing the send grid in Mailgun subcomponents, as we did for voice, SMS, and WhatsApp, we can log the relevant details on the console as per the requirement. Next step is SMTP component. This is the default implementation of SMTP component and I am calling it default SMTP sender. As you know, the SMTP component internally must delegate to three, three sub-components, Google, SES and Maya. Here, I am again choosing at random using the previous method of generating a number and dividing by 3. Implementing the three SMTP providers is very trivial as I am doing it here. We only have to log to console. Next step, let us focus on wiring all these pins together to form the cohesive application. Till now, we have a decoupled application. Each individual component exists on its own. Let us glue the application together to form a cohesive application. Quickly diverting to the drawing board to visualize the dependencies. Communicator depends on email sender, SMS sender, WhatsApp sender, Voice call sender. Email sender depends on SendGrid sender, Mailgun sender, SMTP sender. SMTP sender depends on Google SMTP sender, AWS SES SMTP sender, My SMTP sender. We can use this as a reference when wiring the beans together. Coming back to the code, I am using XML configuration to wire these beans. The XML file is beans.xml in the class path. We already learned the basic concepts of XML configuration, so kindly follow along. First, I am defining the communicator bean definition using property and ref elements to configure dependencies for this bean. Starting with email center bean definition, choosing the appropriate ID and implementing class. Next, I am defining SMTP center bin definition. Referring back to our dependency diagram, SMTP center bin depends on three other beans. Next up, let us define the remaining bin definitions. These beans don't depend on any other beans, hence the bin definitions are pretty straightforward for these beans.
With the XML configuration sorted out, let us focus on the driver program. First of all, let us instantiate the Spring IOC container. Since we are not using Spring Boot as of now, we have to instantiate the Spring IOC container manually. Recall what should be the correct application context type here. If you have guessed it as class path XML application context, then you are right since the bin definitions file beans.xml is present in class path. I said that inputs have to be read from the console. This is the last piece. Let us implement reading inputs from the console. This should be easy. I am using buffered reader as shown here, but you, can, you are free to choose whatever suits you. It's always a good practice to always use try with resource statement as, will, as it will auto close the strings. using a for loop to read 10 input arguments from the console. I'm breaking the line here using the split, using the first element as the communication type. I'm creating four if else statements here. If the communication type is email, we will delegate to email and similarly for SMS, WhatsApp and voice call. If there is no match, then we are throwing runtime exception here. Creating the user domain class object with relevant inputs and passing it to the communicator, we accomplish our requirements. We either will read email or mobile number from the console. Email will be read in case of communication type as email, otherwise, I am considering it as mobile number. Let me run the application. First is building the runnable artifact from the source code. Maven has a simple command to build the source code, MVN clean package. Next is running the bundle jar as Java jar. Our application failed to run and we can see the no class dev found error exception. This error means that the particular class is not found in the Java class path. Since we are using Maven and Maven bundles our source code into a runnable jar, we have to modify the Maven configuration a little bit to include project dependencies into the runnable jar. First, we need to define Maven dependency plugin to copy the dependencies to a specific folder. Next up, we need to configure the Maven jar plugin to include those dependencies in our runnable jar. In later videos, we will learn how to use Spring Boot Maven plugin to bundle a runnable jar, which is highly convenient. After fixing these issues and rerunning the application, the application should work as expected. At this point of time, our application is running and it is expecting some inputs from the console. We can test the application with multiple inputs. Next up, let us implement the Java configuration 
for the XML configuration we defined above. If you recall, the primary building blocks of the Java configuration are configuration annotated classes and bean annotated methods. So let us create the main configuration class here with relevant bean methods. We would need to have a bean method for each of the beans in our application. First up is communicator. Dependencies are expected as method arguments. Manually instantiating the object of default communicator and passing in the dependencies next is email sender dependencies are expected as method arguments same as with email sender invoking the relevant setter methods next up is send grid sender Next is mailgun sender. Next is SMTP sender. Dependencies are expected as method arguments. Next is Google SMTP sender. It's always a good practice to document the code. Next is AWS SES SMTP sender, my SMTP sender, next is SMS sender, next is WhatsApp sender, and finally we have voice call sender. To make use of Java configuration, we have to instantiate the Spring IOC container which supports Java configuration. Recall the relevant application context type is annotation config application context. Updating the application context in the math method is the only change we need to do. Compiling the code again and restarting the application. We can see that application is expecting inputs from the console, providing some inputs and testing the application thoroughly. This should be very trivial as I am simply copy pasting the inputs here. If you remember, the loop will run 10 times before the program will exit. That's it for today's video. Comment your doubts in the comment section and I will address them as promptly as possible. The link to the source code for this application is in the description section as well. Go check it out. In the next video, we will understand beans in detail covering the following topics. Number 1. What type of objects can be considered as beans? Number 2. Beans instantiation. Number 3. Beans life cycle. Once again, thank you and keep learning. I will see you in the next one.